Imagine the frozen vastness of North America. Deep snow blanketing the ground. Cutting wind blowing through the pines. And two predators. Two experienced hunters. Two survivors who have mastered the art of hunting in these unforgiving lands. But when these two masters meet face to face, when territory overlaps and prey becomes scarce, when there's no more room to avoid confrontation, who survives? One of them is a cunning canid that has colonized nearly the entire continent, known for its intelligence and adaptability. The other is a silent feline, a ghost of the boreal forests, equipped with deadly tools and surgical precision when attacking. Today we're going to analyze not just who would win this duel, but understand how these animals hunt, how they interact, and what science has actually observed when they faced off in nature. Get ready, because this confrontation is more fascinating than you can imagine. Let's start with the canid. This animal is a true evolutionary success story. A hundred years ago, its presence was limited to just a few regions. Today, it's in every corner of North America, from Alaska to Mexico, from forests to the edges of cities. This predator measures between 3.3 and 3.6 feet in body length, with an additional 16 inches of tail. It generally weighs between 18 and 44 pounds, with males being larger. Its shoulder height varies from 21 to 24 inches, but it's not the size that makes it special. It's its adaptive intelligence. While many specialist predators declined with environmental changes, this animal thrived. It learned to use human trails in deep snow to conserve energy. It discovered that roads make travel easier. It figured out that dawn and dusk are the perfect times to hunt. This canid is an endurance predator. Where felines bet on quick bursts of speed and power, it bets on exhaustion. In groups, they can pursue larger prey over long distances, biting tendons, pulling, wounding repeatedly until the prey simply can't take it anymore. Its bite reaches an estimated 682.9 newtons of force. The carnassial teeth are well developed. The canines, though slender, are efficient. And the span of its jaw allows it to grab and hold with considerable strength. But perhaps its greatest asset is versatility. This animal eats almost anything. Rabbits, rodents, young deer, birds, even fruits and insects when necessary. When wolves were eliminated from much of the United States, this predator filled the ecological vacuum, expanding its territory dramatically. Science has observed that in regions where they became abundant, even other smaller predators began to suffer. Studies in Santa Monica showed that 7 out of 12 gray fox deaths were caused by this canid. It doesn't just compete, it eliminates smaller competitors. Now let's move to the feline. A ghost of the boreal forests. A specialist. A predator so connected to its main prey that its populations rise and fall in predictable 10-year cycles, following exactly the fluctuation in numbers of its favorite food. This wild cat measures between 28.7 and 42.1 inches in length, standing 19 to 22 inches tall at the shoulder. Weight varies from 13.9 to 37.5 pounds. Apparently similar to the first combatant in dimensions, right? But here's the crucial difference. This feline has adaptations that make it a perfectly tuned hunting machine for a specific environment. Its paws are disproportionately large, functioning like natural snowshoes, allowing it to float over deep snow where other predators sink and slow down. Its claws are curved, retractable, and sharp on all four paws. It can strike with the front ones or use the powerful hind legs, considering its impressive jumping ability. And these claws don't just serve to wound, but to grab, allowing it to obtain ideal positions for the final blow. And what blow is that? This feline doesn't waste time. It leaps straight for the throat or the nape, targeting the cervical vertebrae. A technical, precise, deadly attack. Its bite force is estimated at 541 newtons, less than the canid, but it doesn't need brute force when it has surgical precision. 
Recent studies using accelerometers and audio recorders on collars revealed fascinating details. Researchers were able to hear the sound of one of these felines hunting, the noise of branches breaking during pursuit, the sharp cry of prey being taken down, and then the unmistakable sound of bones being crushed and chewed. This predator eats an average of 1.2 snowshoe hairs per day. When prey is abundant, it can kill more than it needs. But its dependence on this specific prey is so great that when its numbers drop drastically every 10 years, this feline also suffers a dramatic population collapse. Unlike the versatile canid, this is a specialist. Its claws were shaped by evolution to grab fast rabbits, its wide paws to pursue over snow, its coat changes color seasonally for perfect camouflage, Every aspect of its biology screams one word, specialization. But before we reveal what this mysterious feline is and discover what happens when these two meet in nature, if you're enjoying this detailed content about animal behavior and wildlife duels, subscribe to the channel now. You won't regret what's coming. The two combatants are the coyote and the Canadian lynx and science has observed real encounters between them. The results are surprising. First, it's important to understand that under normal conditions, when there's enough food for both, coyotes and lynxes avoid each other. They cohabit the same regions but maintain respectful distance. Intimidation occurs. Attempts to steal killed prey happen, especially by groups of coyotes, but direct confrontations are rare. Snow is the great equalizer. Studies have shown that lynxes prefer higher elevations where snow is deeper and more consistent, using their morphological advantage. Coyotes stay at lower elevations where snow is shallow, or use trails left by other animals, including the lynxes themselves, to move with less effort. But when snow is shallow or non-existent, the lynx's advantage disappears. Recent research on climate change revealed something concerning. With warmer winters and less deep snow, coyotes gain traction and become much more efficient hunters of snowshoe hares. This means more direct competition for the lynx. Now let's get to the documented direct confrontations. And here the data becomes even more interesting. There's a detailed scientific report. Researchers frequently observed coyotes during field work. On one specific occasion, a coyote was on the road, but its behavior was different. Instead of the usual caution with humans and vehicles, the animal kept its gaze fixed ahead. Suddenly, there was an explosive fight with a flurry of fur and paws. The coyote ran into the forest, leaving behind the body of a dead lynx. Examination revealed that the coyote had broken its victim's neck, a young animal weighing only 15 pounds. The lynx was at least two-thirds the size of the coyote and was capable of fighting well, but it lost. Another photographic record showed a bobcat, a close relative, locked onto a coyote. This lynx was eventually killed, but reports indicate it had killed two coyotes before facing this third and fatal adversary. In studies with bobcats in Santa Monica, researchers confirmed clear behavioral dominance by coyotes. 7 out of 12 gray fox deaths and 2 out of 5 bobcat deaths were derived from coyote predation. Important, no coyotes die as a result of these interactions. So what does science conclude? The coyote is an opportunistic predator that, on certain occasions, has shown itself capable of venturing out and even managing to kill juvenile lynxes. Most likely, two or more coyotes could threaten even adult lynxes. The numerical advantage of coyotes is devastating. But when we're talking about healthy adults and individual confrontation, there's clearly mutual avoidance. Why? Because both know the risk is too high. Let's look at the decisive factors in a hypothetical individual confrontation between healthy adults. Size and weight slightly favor the coyote. Bite force too. Cardiovascular endurance definitely favors the coyote which evolved for long pursuits. But the lynx has crucial advantages. Deadly claws that can tear and grab. 
superior agility at short distance, enhanced feline reflexes, and especially that specialized attack tech technique, the direct leap to throat or nape. The central question is, who manages to apply their strategy first? If the coyote can maintain distance, use its endurance, force a prolonged fight where it can use repeated bites to tire the lynx, it has real chances. Its experience hunting in groups, biting tendons and rear regions could be applied. But if the lynx can close the distance quickly, use its claws to grab a favorable position and apply that accurate bite to the throat or nape, the confrontation can end in seconds. Felines don't play around. They finish. Considering everything, the history of documented confrontations, morphological adaptations, hunting styles, and theoretical analysis of strengths and weaknesses in an individual confrontation between healthy adults, I would give 40% chance to the coyote against 60% chance to the Canadian lynx. The coyote has size, strong bite, and endurance. But the lynx has the specialized tools of an assassin, claws, finishing technique, and superior reflexes. In a confrontation that would probably last only a few intense seconds, the lynx's specialization surpasses the coyote's versatility. Of course, add one more coyote to the equation and the math changes completely. But one on one? The ghost of the boreal forests takes it. So what did you think of this analysis? Do you agree, disagree? Comment below. If this video fascinated you, if you want to see more detailed and scientifically based confrontations between predators, subscribe to the channel now. Hit the bell to not miss any new content. And there's a special video I left as a gift for you right here. Believe me, you'll want to watch it. I won't spoil the surprise by revealing what it's about, but I guarantee it's worth every second. Cheers and see you in the next wild analysis.